up everybody? My name is Danilo Lewis, tour photographer of the Chainsmokers. And welcome to this episode of In the Field. Yo, welcome back to another In the Field episode. Today we are going in the field with the Chainsmokers personal tour photographer, Danilo Lewis. Now let's ask ourselves this question. Why do the Chainsmokers continue to hire Danilo over and over again? Let me answer that for you. It's because his work ethic is through the roof and his photography skills are next level. So for today, Danilo's gonna show you what life is like on the road when touring, how he prepares his shot lists, what's in his gear bag, and so much more. This episode is an absolute banger. But before we get into it, if you're new to this channel, we're dedicated to providing content creators with inspiration, motivation, and education around filmmaking, photography, business education, and more. So if you like the video or you wanna be involved in this community, hit that subscribe button for me one time. Now let's get into it. So right now, we're in the middle of sound check. We're in the middle of sound check. The VIP guests that uh, get a chance to view sound check are arriving. This is my time where I literally just start watching like the venue, seeing what the venue looks like, seeing the spaces I'm gonna be at. Also have to be mindful of that in this tour, we don't allow media to be in the pit. So we only allow media to be front of house for the first 10 minutes. So I'm very mindful of that. I try not to be on stage or in their way for the first 10 minutes. This is Elliot. He's our uh, stage manager. He keeps me from getting blown up and burned, <laughs> burned the world to pieces. And from time to time, he'll yell at me and tell me not to go on stage. So at the end of the day, only he goes, when you're being a bad boy. <laughs> only when I'm being a bad boy. <laughs> but from time to time, I go up to him and I'm, I tell him things I'm, I'm planning to do on stage, and I get like the stone face was like, no. But eventually, I nudge him just enough to be able to get away with what I want to get away with. So I'm technically allowed to be able to do as I please on stage, but the problem with big shows like this is that you start to get into pyrotechnics and fire and, and CO2 and there's tons and tons of production that's going on on stage during the show. You don't want to be on stage all the time because obviously you get in the way. You want to be out there on the field, on the stands, on the floor, capturing the actual show. You get to actually see what all this money is being put into. After this, we're gonna head out to uh, meet and greet. Nice to meet you. Hey. All right, everybody, look this way. On two, ready? On two, one, two. Awesome. Thank you so much. And now we just get to relax, have fun, and start to get ready for the show. Best photographer in the world. Oh, yeah, you're so sweet to me. Oh. <laughs> so guys, welcome to the bus. As you can see, this is the lounge part. Um, this is where we eat, we relax. Sometimes before the show, I come in here just to have some quiet time. This is essentially our some of our primary crew. We have two buses for our artists. This is one of our artist buses that I stay at. I stay with Alex. This is very important, guys. The bathroom. And there's a lot of guys here and one girl and we're being bad guys because the toilet seats up and we should put it down. Okay guys, no number twos on this bus, no number twos on any bus ever. Right here, that's where I do all my editing. I do it after the show. I, uh, sometimes I do it in the morning depending on what we're doing after the show and if I want to get some sleep or not. But usually by 9 a.m. the next morning, everything's ready to go. And I could probably have an entire show's content ready within an hour and a half. I'm a Lightroom guy, mainly because it's easier to batch edit, it's easier to sort through a lot of things. That's just my process. One key thing I always tell people, it may seem like a lot, but it will save you in the end. When you're touring portable SSD drives over just regular drives. SSDs during touring, when you're moving around, you're doing so much stuff, you wanna keep your files safe. That is one of the worthwhile investments in photography. That is one of the best things you can have while on the road. I always do keep a regular drive on me. That uh, That's just sort of for, for backup that I keep away from me, away from my bag that stays here on the bus all the time. So I back up um, pretty much every night. The moment I'm done editing um, everything, I just go back and I do a mirror back up straight into that file of whatever was uploaded today. Let's get into some gear. I shoot 1DX Mark II. This is a 35mm Sigma 1.4. Flash 
not on for the show. We only had it on for a meet and greet. I keep a lot of stuff during the show um, that I need ready available to me. And sometimes when you're reaching in your pockets, it gets hectic. So it's always easier to just, uh, just keep it right here on my chest. I grab my phone, I put a, sometimes I put an extra lens in there. Usually what I do with my 5D Mark IV and the 7200, they go together, they stay together during the entire show. With the 1DX, that goes through a rotation, depending on where I'm at, depending on the angle, I'm gonna change how I want that to look. And obviously with so many shows that we do, you don't wanna give them the same look all the time. Also, you can never have enough batteries. Trust me, I have batteries everywhere. I do keep two film cameras, just for, just for fun. I do wear this throughout the entire day before the show because I keep one film camera here, I keep a lens here, and this way I don't have to be walking around with a big camera all day, every day, and it's just, it just helps. One of the things I like to do is, before the show, just come see the arena, so I know like where I'm gonna go, and where I plan to uh, shoot photos, especially for pyro, fire, CO2, all the works that we have. One of the things I do is I keep our set list right here, right on my phone, nice and handy. The reason for that is, while I can remember pretty much the entire show, there are times that in the moment you kind of forget like specific moments and I'll just go straight into it and I'll be able to see what time, time frame, how long do I have between songs, between transitions. I like to keep our pyro and our uh, CO2 list close to me. So I know like, for example, in Roses, we only have CO2. But in Paris, we have a CO2 and we have an all mine fire. We have fire positions everywhere. This is how I map out where I'm gonna be throughout the venue. You know, usually just through the beginning because there's a specific moment of a big pyro shot with a big jump shot from Drew. More, more often than not, I'm gonna be in the pit for that. Uh, the main reason for that is it's a big moment. It's the beginning of the show. It's, it's, when you see it, it's just big, it's loud. It's one of the best things to capture throughout the show. And then, honestly, I move around through the crowd, through the field. There's very um, personal moment to me as far as like what the pyro looks like, which is uh, during this feeling. Drew is on the guitar, he's close to the mic, and on the sides of him, behind him, are these mines that are going off. Why sh you should be good to people like him? This is our lighting director, which means my photos look really good because of this gentleman right here. No, okay? My lights look good because of you. Oh, oh, get oh. that, baby. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if you can actually get on stage when five sauce are on stage. I can, know? yeah, I definitely can. Why don't you do that tonight? You should be at the thrust and shoot them at like eye line. Which thrust? Up all the way at the yeah. end? Yeah. So I should go ahead of them? That'd be cool. How about I just stand there with a model pad and go high and still eye line? But you get those, those intimate shots, you know? They're like, okay. I'm good with that. Hopefully everybody else will. <laughs> I've actually mentioned Jeremiah in the previous podcast that I talked, I talked about you. Some of the things we do is when we're on stage and we're not on stage is we're never in each other's way. It's, it's actually of, kind of shocking. It's actually, <laughs> yeah. But it's part of, you know, being in a team. You know, how you handle like the power shots, how you handle where you're going to be on stage, yeah. how you, you know, who's going to be on stage when. And there's never been a time that we've ever yeah. crossed paths. The only time that there is like a big moment when like we know like Drew's going to jump off the stage or something. Well, yeah. We, and then <laughs> what I do, because he needs one dope shot. I go high, you I'm go shooting, low. Yeah, he goes high, I go low. And then I'll start out of frame. So then by the time, by the time he frame. gets, by the time he, and it's like time perfect. So like the jump happens and I'm in motion getting my shot. Danilo just got his perfectly. And then I just like cross over right in front of him. Yeah. So then I'm like probably in his, a couple of his clicks, but he's but got right. one. But the one I always yeah. close is you're not on it. By the way, you got to jump in that podcast. We're coming. It's Episode true. soon. Yeah. Episode <laughs> soon, I'm sure. Let's go. It's going to be at the, the same tour, the same location. Yeah. yeah. People see me with this often. They're always asking me what it is. It's a remote trigger, but essentially connects straight to the camera. And when I um, put it on the monopod, which my monopod's in here, I trigger wirelessly when it's all the way up. So I use a harness because I do use two bodies. So just to make sure all optics stay nice and clean. And maybe do a little view in the back. Yep, that's pretty clean. And now we're all set. Locked and loaded for the show tonight. I do have earplugs, they're in here, but I will put them on before the show. And then, uh, we're off to shoot a show. Let's go.
I'm gonna be on stage trying to get one of the most massive light shots here. That was sick. You guys want a preview? Woo! That's a wrap on an incredible, incredible show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Shouts to Ben for uh, including me in his podcast and including me in this uh, Inside the Live series. Thank you, my guy. Love you, appreciate you. Nikos, behind the camera. That's the man right there. My guy. Peace. Yo, shout out to Danilo. This was such a cool experience. If you haven't heard the interview that we did with him on the Black Window Cream podcast, you need to check it out. I put a link in the description below. Listen to it. His story is incredible. He's such an amazing photographer. Leave us a comment below. I'm curious to hear like what you think about these in the field episodes, what you want to see in the next one, who you want to see us go in the field with next time. Please do that and hit the subscribe button because that's going to help us keep it going. Have a great work week. Keep creating. We'll see you next week, you bitch. bitch.